Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making my famous potato croquettes. So follow, uh, cut that one. Okay, let's one, two, three, four, five, okay. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making my world famous potato croquettes. Stay tuned and watch how they're done. back to my channel it's been a while since I've, uh, I made a video so I'm gonna actually put a good one together today one of my favorite side dishes that I do a lot with sometimes I get tired of just doing regular mashed potatoes so today I'm gonna make my award-winning potato croquettes potato croquettes and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stuff them with uh, fresh mozzarella you can stuff them with fresh mozzarella, you can stuff them with ham, you can stuff them with prosciutto, you can even put salami inside of them. Today I'm just gonna, I like to make them two ways. Either I make them plain or I make them with just mozzarella. So today we're gonna do them with just mozzarella on the inside. So let me show you the ingredients you're gonna need. Okay, so I have five pounds of Idaho russet potatoes. Okay, so I have five pounds of those. You can use uh, golden, uh, I like the russet, uh, I think the russet actually tastes better, so, but by all means use whatever potatoes you're comfortable with, but uh, today I'm using the russet. You're going to need at least one pound of fresh mozzarella. It should be fresh, but if you can't find the fresh anywhere near your store, in your store, you can use the polio. <clears throat> uh, that's also good, but for the best taste, I would recommend using fresh. You're going to need some fresh parsley. You're going to need one cup of uh, Pecorino Romano cheese. You can use regular Parmesan cheese, or you can use both. Today I'm using just the Pecorino Romano. I have one cup here. I may be adding a little bit more. I have seven eggs, and not all of the eggs are going to be for the potatoes. So when I put it together, I'll let you know how many eggs. But we're going to need some eggs to basically batter, batter the uh, potato croquettes with. You're going to need pepper and you're going to need salt and you're going to need uh f i use four season uh breadcrumbs and i use the ones that seasons this is the only time i actually use pre-made breadcrumbs is when i make my chicken cutlets or when i make uh potato croquettes when it comes to anything else i i, I like to use my own and you're going to need a pan a baking sheet to put these on once you roll them out uh, you're gonna lay them out in a pan, let them sit for a while before you actually start deep frying them. You can use a deep fryer, which I have, but today I'm not gonna use a deep fryer. Today I'm gonna use a big frying pan and just fill it up with enough oil. I'm gonna show you all that step by step. I figured the deep, deep frying pan that I have, the deep fryer that I have only holds about three. I wanna try to get at least six or seven in a frying pan at one time because I'm, I am going to be making a lot of them. So that today I'm gonna be using a frying pan. But if you have a deep fryer, and maybe a small one or a medium-sized one, by all means, use that if you want to. And also, you're going to need a ricer. If you don't have a ricer, uh, you, could, you, you could mash the potatoes with a, just a regular masher. But I think for best results, to get a silky smooth uh, mashed potato consistency, I think the ricer is the way to go. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually cook the, the potatoes, and then we'll put everything else together. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that when I was talking about you, what you're going to need is a ricer. You're not going to need a ricer. I like to do it with a ricer because the, the silkier the potato, the better the potato croquette is going to taste. So if you don't have a ricer uh, like this, I actually have two of them. If you don't have a ricer, you could also use, uh, let's see, I do have uh, an old-fashioned right here. So... You can use an old-fashioned masher. I have one of these as well. This would work just as well. But what you want to do is you want to get the lumps out. I mean, it's good when you're making mashed potatoes. Some people like lumps in their mashed potatoes. I do. When you're making potato croquettes, I would prefer to have my mashed potato, my mashed potatoes very silk and smoothing. No lumps. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And the way you're going to do that is by using a ricer. So if you have one of these... Uh, by all means use it. I got this on Amazon. It was like less than $15 So you can get one of these, but if not you can use a masher. So 
what I did was I peeled my tomatoes. Your tomatoes. And, uh, my potato. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I peeled my potatoes. Uh, some people like to leave the skins on because it keeps some of the starch in, these, the starch in it. I like it, but for me, if I leave the skins on, it makes it hot. You know, it's you have to peel them. It's hot. You can burn your fingers. But some people do like to leave the skins on as they're boiling their potatoes, which is also fine. I like to peel my skins, and then some people like to actually boil the potatoes whole. It takes a very long time to cook. It does. I like to just cut mine in quarters, sort of like this. Just to give you an idea, so basically I have four pieces. These will cook very, very quickly as opposed to this particular one that hasn't been cut. These will cook very, very quickly. So if you're in a rush, I would recommend cutting them in cubes. Whether you leave them like this or whether you cut them in cubes, they're going to taste the same. This is just going to take a lot longer to cook. This is going to take a short amount of time. Also, a trick, please. Do not put your potatoes in boiling water. The water must be cold. Start off with a cold pot of water, put your potatoes in cold water, then turn your oven on Your oven on, and let them cook. If you put them in boiling water, what's going to happen is the outside is going to cook, the inside is still going to be raw, and then you're going to end up with a, a mushy mashed potato in the water. You want it to cook evenly, so you start off by bringing the temperature up from cold to medium to high, the whole thing gets cooked thoroughly from the outside in and that's the way you should do it so what i did was just to give you an idea i cut them in small cubes i have my cold water here uh and i'm just going to put them in i'm not going to turn my oven on until all my potatoes are in so when we come back these should all be cut these should all be in the pot and when they're done i'm going to show you how to put it together okay so <clears throat> my potatoes are done i drain them so they're all done i put them back in the pot you're going to need about one stick of butter and I cut up my mozzarella in small little pieces. Okay, so I got my bowl, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start ricing them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put. Be careful, they are hot. They are hot. I'm just gonna get a couple and just put them in here to give you an idea of what the ricer does, so they come out nice and. Look at that. Soapy, that's nice. Okay, so you're gonna continue doing that until they're all done. I'll do one more for you. Let me skip the bottom. Okay, and instead of using a fork because they will break, I'm going to use a spoon. So we just take your potato, and put your potato in here. You can put a couple of more. They do come much better like that than the other one. Well, you want it to be silk and, silk and smooth. You don't want any lumps in them. So the best way is to just rice it. So, look how nice that is. That is, that is really good. Okay, so when we come back, I should have all of this already riced, and I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, so this is the majority of the potatoes. I just want to show you one more time. So basically, I took my potatoes, I'm just gonna put them in my ricer. And that's why I'm, it's so much easier to do it with the ricer because you want this to come out as silk and okay. smooth. Okay, so that's the last of my potatoes. Mm. And basically, you just squeeze. That's it. Until it all comes out. And that is it. Okay. And now you're done with the ricer. And these are your potatoes. Nice and silk, nice and smooth. Silky. Silky, silky. So I don't need this anymore, so we're gonna get rid of this. I'm just gonna clean off a little bit of the mess of the potatoes. Dry this off. Okay, so now, most important thing is, right now, do not put any of the eggs into your mashed potatoes because the potatoes are very hot. You don't want to start scrambling the eggs. But what you can do is you can add your butter. So I got one stick of butter here, and I cut it into eight tablespoons. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just shove them down 
in here, let the butter all melt. One tablespoon. Okay, that's gonna melt. And once that melts, we're gonna start mixing it up. I can uh, gonna wait a little while, I'm gonna wait for the butter to melt, then we're gonna start mixing it together, and then I'm gonna show you how to put the whole thing together. So I'll be back in, in a bit. Okay, so I, I actually changed bowls because I realized I need a much bigger bowl. So, and what I did do is I added another stick of butter. So actually two sticks of butter went into here. So now this is actually cool enough where I can start adding the other ingredients. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one tablespoon of pepper. And I'm going to add Four tablespoons of salt. One tablespoon of salt. Just a tiny bit more. Okay. The salt. You love your salt, don't you? We're going to add the parsley. How much parsley? I got about two tablespoons of parsley. And I'm going to just give this a quick mix. Now, I am going to use my hands, but I'm not going to use my hands yet until I put the eggs in. Oh, you don't put milk in this, do you? Uh, no milk in here. Remember, we're, we're, I know you want to make mashed potatoes, and mashed potatoes does call for milk, but you don't have to add any milk to this. Okay, so that's mixed. The next thing you want to do is you want to add your one cup of cheese. And by all means, if you like cheese, don't be afraid to add a lot more. Not a lot more. Well, not, not like as, much as, you, as much as you like. Like as much as you got the potatoes. You know, so I like cheese. So I'm going to actually taste this before I put the eggs in. Because I want to see if there's enough salt. And there's enough pepper and cheese. Be nice and silk and smooth. Silky. Silky. You always pronounce that wrong, silk. Silky. silky. Okay, I'm going to give this a quick taste to see if there's uh, anything I need. That is absolutely delicious. Okay, this we don't need anymore. Okay, so. I have my seven eggs. <clears throat> Not all of them are going in here. Uh, some of these are going to be for the ba uh, for for the batter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in. Start off by putting one whole egg. The two. And I'm going to do three. And my fourth egg. Let's move this out of the way. My fourth egg is only going to be the yolk. And why is that? Uh, you don't know. I actually I don't know. <laughs> but I just want, I just want the yolk on. That's this the way you learn. Yeah. Now the best way to mix this, as long as your hands are clean, just get on in there. Give it a good working over. And just give it a good working over. Because you want to, you, you'll be able to know the consistency. Who says that? Give a good working over. Oh, I don't know. What are the shows it's from watch? a TV show we would probably yeah. watch. And the only reason why I tasted it before I put the eggs in is because it's not safe to eat raw eggs. It's someone else. Okay. So, and basically what you want to do is you want to be able to as long as you can make 
something like that, you know it's good. So when we come back, we're going to start putting this together and uh, I'll show you how to bread them. And uh, then we're going to deep fry them in the frying pan and we're going to have some beautiful award-winning potato croquettes. Yes. Okay, so I have everything set up. I have my bacon sheet on the side. I did put a little bit of the seasoned breadcrumb on the bottom. I have my mozzarella, I have my egg batter, and I have my breadcrumb here, and I have my potatoes here. I have a, a deep frying pan. I normally use a deep fryer, but today, because I'm making so many, I want to fit about eight or nine. So when I filled it about halfway up with some vegetable oil and I have it on, when it reaches a certain temperature, I'm going to start frying them up. So what you do is, just take a little bit, that's about a nice size, maybe like a nice little golf ball size, and then just start making it into a cylinder. They don't have to be huge. They're better than when they're freaking so big. Yeah, they're nice when they're small. So you can make them that small, but I think we should make them a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit. So let's do this over again. A little bit bigger than a, a golf ball and then just start making it into a cylinder. Okay, and then what you're going to do is press your finger and make an indentation in the middle. Take a piece of mozzarella. Not to go all the way through. Not to go all the way through and just close it up. set so what I'm gonna do is when we come back I'm gonna actually put these together first before I actually start breading them so when I come because it'll make it easier to make them all first in the form that you want and then we could put them in the egg and then we'll put them in the breadcrumb and yes. then we'll put them in the other pan but right now we'll just do it this way so when we come back we'll have them all assembled as far as put together but not in the batter okay so basically basically my uh, potato croquettes are actually formed there are a couple that are a little bit bigger than others, but that's fine. That's okay. And then I have my tray with the breadcrumb on the bottom. So I'm going to start off with the egg mixture. And it's always good to have two people do this with you, but unfortunately when you don't have two people, one will have to suffice. suffice. So you're going to take the one. But words, but words. And we're just going to roll it around in the egg mixture. What are these gloves? No, I don't want to keep losing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, no. That's what you don't... No, gloves are fine. So I'm going to actually do two. Okay. Just keep that cylinder shape and you'll be fine. Then we're going to roll it around the breadcrumb. Make sure to coat everything. Everything. Even the sides. Okay, so now. I don't know if a lot of people do this, but I do, and my father did this also. I like a little bit of a crunch on mine, so I'm going to just put it back in the egg bath. And then I'm going to roll it back in the breadcrumb again. Well, you could do that, wow. Yeah. It gives it a double protective coating. It also prevents them from cracking open. That's a good tip. Yep. Just put it out there. Everybody listens to this video, listens to that tip. Prevents cracking. Go ahead, Vic. Okay, so you, that's one done. And this is another. Again, you don't have to double, you know, bread them. It's totally up to you. I like a little bit of a crunch on mine, and I like, you know. So those are two. And we're going to continue until all of these are done. I think I made a total of two, four, six two six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen i made 17 of these wow. so these are going to be for a snack we're having uh lemon chicken tonight for dinner so this is going to be a side dish and we'll probably end up munching on it tomorrow as well so when i come back these should all be actually you know what let me just do one more for you do one more yeah i'll do one more for you so again in the egg bath one time right crumb And you're going to have to wash your hands uh, every so often because if you can see on mine, 
they're starting to build up a little. In the egg bath again. Double in the dip. Breadcrumb. Top, bottom, keep that cylinder shape. And there is number three. Okay, so when we come back, I should have these all done and uh, we'll start frying them up. Okay, so these are all done and they're all breaded. This is the only one I single. I didn't do a double dipping in this one. So I just wanted to see how that one came out. So I got my oil all hot. I got a pan with a drip. Uh, so when you put them on here, the oil actually thri drips through. Is it, as far as the heat of the oil, is a certain temperature you have to be? Or what? Uh, it should be at about 375. Okay. But you can tell when you put it in. So you want to be very careful when you yes. drop them in. That's perfect. When we start sizzling like that. I let them, uh, just so you know, I let them sit for about uh, five to 10 minutes before I actually started frying them. I want them to actually stiffen up a little. Okay, so basically I have about two, four, I have five in here. I think I can fit one more. Yeah, one we'll, more. We'll make it six. So we can do six at a time. If I would have used my fryer, I probably would have only did three at a time. So I can definitely do. So now we just let them cook for a while. And you check them, you turn them over, you want a nice golden crust on the outside. And then uh, when they cool down and when they're almost all, when they're all done, I'm actually gonna break one open for you. And I'm hoping that mozzarella cheese inside actually stretches. It will. I'm hoping. Sometimes it doesn't stretch. It's because maybe I didn't cook it long enough, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So let's cook these. So we got about six of them in there. We got about two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven more to go. So we have a while. So when these are done, I'll show you what they all look like. Okay, so these are, the majority of them are done. This is the one I only coated once. You can see it's a lighter color. But these are all nice and crispy. So I only have about five more left. And I'm going to get ready to take this guy out. Just be very, very careful. Yeah, seriously. I want you to put your finger down. Like, oh my God. Okay. So we have that one. And just check. See, the deep fryer, you don't have to do any of this turning over. Deep fryer just does everything. So let's get this guy out. Okay, so this guy's done. Let's see if we can squeeze him in here. Yeah. Okay, and then I have three more. So these are almost done. I probably got another minute or so on each on those, but these came out very, very nicely. I'm going to cut one open for you in a little while. After I take the other three out, I think I'm going to actually cut open the one that's the lightest one in color. I'm going to do that. Oh, is any cracking? Now, there is a little bit of, like, on oh, the yeah, edges, that's, that's it's a little it. bit of cracking on the edge, but that's to be expected. Sometimes, if you were to put this in a deep fryer, most likely these probably won't crack, but the majority of them did not crack, so that's very, very good. Uh, maybe I just didn't do enough breading on, this, on the edge of this one. I might have missed that one. I think these I can take out now. Oh, it's hot. Oh, my God, it's crazy. That's okay. I'm Italian. I'm used to hot oil. Yeah, right. Okay, that's the, that's what, that's the guy who's going to the emergency room. Yeah, that's okay. Italians always like to get burnt. We get burnt from the government. We I get burnt that. from everybody. We're so used to getting burnt. Oh, my God. Okay, so this one has a little bit of a crack on the edge, on the end. But that's fine. That's Don't worry about that. That's, oh, that's It's okay. still going to taste like a potato croquette, so don't worry. Let's see if I just slide this over. I think I can get that last one. Yeah, this one looks really good. So this is a big one. Let's see what oh my God. Get that out of the way. Put that here. Don't do what he just did no, at don't. home. That's do very, not very touch out of oil. It's very dangerous. Okay, so there you go. Potato croquettes. 
very, very nice. I'm going to actually come back. I'm going to cut one open. I'm going to cut that guy open right there. I'm going to cut open. Let's hope the cheese uh, it will melt. melts. Let the oil cool down before you get rid of it. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a side dish. We're having lemon chicken tonight for dinner, so this is going to be a side dish. But I'm going to cut one open for you guys in about a second. You so can strain your oil and use it again if you want to. Yeah, if you're going to make potato croquettes, I wouldn't yeah. cook anything else in it. Yeah. If you're going to make potato croquettes and you want to wait for it to cool, you want to strain it, you want to save it, and you're going to make potato croquettes again, you can use the same oil. I just like using fresh oil the whole time, so it's no big deal. So when we come back, we're going to cut one open. Okay, so... I'm going to cut open to this potato croquette. I'm going to hope and pray that it actually, the cheese did actually melt a little. So I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to, and look, there oh, it is. That's ah, beautiful. Nice. The cheese did melt. Let's give it a taste. It's going to be hot. It is hot. <laughs> oh, my God. That is to die for. That's oh, why that they're award-winning. Go for a walk or call a friend. Alexa. Alexa. See? She reminds me every day, go for a walk or call a friend. I don't call a friend. I do go for a walk. My God, this is absolutely delicious. And you know what makes it? Got to use a ricer. The ricer makes them smooth and silky. If you use an old-fashioned masher, you're going to have lumps, and I don't think you want lumps. Oh, my God, this is so good. I'm going to have another piece. Oh, the fresh mozzarella is so good. You could put prosciutto in here. You could put salami. Salami? you like. I like... Did I say salami? You said salama. Salama. Salami. But I like it either with plain mozzarella. If I'm going to put any kind of meat inside, it's going to be ham. Or I like them plain. This is absolutely delicious. So this is going to be a side dish tonight. For my award-winning potato croquette. My father's recipe, actually. And uh, like I said, we're going to have lemon chicken and one of these on the side. Look how big they are. Only one would be enough. And Father Brown. Exactly, Father Brown. Okay, <laughs> whatever. <coughs> like I say at the end of all my videos, take care of one another, especially now today. Peace out, everybody.